Celtics have numbers if they push. Hauser waits, shoots. Holiday tries it. Horford, another offensive rebound. Richard says, why not? Oh, my goodness. The marathon possession. Just by Hauser. Celtics fans on their feet here in Charlotte. White, the teardrop goes. What a possession for Boston, and Steve Clifford has seen it up. And the Celtic fans here in the building love it. And there were a lot of Celtics fans in that building. Welcome in here to Celtics Post Game Live, presented by your New England Ford dealers. I'm Abby Chin, he's Eddie House, and the Celtics get their 59th win of the season final score, 118-104 over the lowly Charlotte Hornets. Eddie, I don't know how much we should celebrate, but the Celtics close out this road trip, the season-long road trip, at 4-2, and, and, and look like themselves for stretches of tonight. Yeah, they, they did, and we're going to celebrate because it's a victory. We celebrate yes. all victories, you know, and that, and no matter how we get them done, we get them done, and we celebrate those. Um, You're right. I should be I, more I excited. That, I'm sorry. Here we go. I know, no, we, I'm ready. I know. We, we both, I, I'm feeling you where you at. You know, it's like, uh, whatever, but still, it's a good <laughs> victory because every victory, a good victory is better than a loss, ain't it? Yes, sir. It's winning and misery. We know, we know that. Yeah. But um, I, I think we, we – took care of the paint, right? And at, at first it was the Hornets were going to get whatever they wanted in the paint, 34 points in the paint in the first half. That's that, that's ridiculous. Um, and then Sam Hauser, the Sam Hauser gang. He just was on fire and, and fuego from, from behind the, the three-point line. And, you know, I think everybody else, you know, uh, kind of felt, felt that. I mean, Jason Tatum, he had 16 in the first half. He could have been looking for more shots, been trying to get – Get get going more, but I, I felt like the team seen that Sam Hauser had it going. They found him. He was able to knock down shots, and we took care of the paint. It all starts with defense for me. I always look at that because that's what's going to win you the championship. It's not going to be the offensive end. It's going to be the stops that leads to the offensive end. No question. They shored up the paint in the second half, but you're right. This one, all about the howitzer. Drew and Scal caught up with Sam Hauser <laughs> after the game in Charlotte. All right, Celtics beat the Hornets. Sam Hauser, another magnificent game, and we're now joined by the Howitzer himself down on the floor. Sam, for those of us who can't shoot anything like you, can you just tell us what it feels like when you're in a groove like that? <laughs> uh, it feels pretty good, you know. That's that's all I got to say. Yeah, so let's. I want to talk about one play in particular. You filled the corner. It seemed like you were drifting away. It was that far baseline. And if you feel like if you get your feet set, at that point it's just let it go? Yeah. Pretty much, if I can get my feet down underneath me and, and explode up, I think it has a good chance of going in. Hey, and how many, and how many times are you constantly having to read your team and, and what they're going to do? Are, are you, if, if Peyton drives baseline, are you sprinting to those corners? Yeah, I mean, I'm sprinting to the corner, and then if he starts to snake dribble to the middle, I'm going to try to fill back up. And um, I think throughout this year, I've kind of gotten a feel of playing with him, playing with D.Y., playing with Drew, see what they like to do. And when you go on a long road trip like this, and, you know, you got, and it feels like we've been gone for two weeks or whatever, um, going into this game, do you have a different mentality? Yeah, I mean, you know, some guys out, there's more opportunity to play. And um, just trying to take advantage of it and, you know, show what else I can bring to the table. You excited to get back to Boston? Yeah, can't wait. Well, they're starting to get warm. Some golf in your future soon, but that'll be after, yeah, of course, yeah, the playoff. Yeah, one, one yeah more we got to get a ring first. Yeah. <laughs> one, one more from me. Sorry, we're, we've been going back and forth with this game in the uh, Iowa-LSU game. You're a big fan of Caitlin Clark. I mean, it seems like everybody is. But uh, are, will you go back and watch this game? I know you get sucked into your vortex of the NBA, but how much March Madness women's or men's do you get a chance to catch up on? Yeah, we've been watching a pretty decent amount so far. Uh, it's been an exciting tournament. Uh, both tournaments have been well, and um, Caitlin Clark has been exciting, and uh, see if she can keep it rolling. Hope you didn't watch the UVA men in the first yeah. four. Uh, it didn't end up well for Yikes. us. <laughs> All right, Sam. Thanks, man. Yep. Congrats. Thanks, Thank you. Look at Sam Hauser, 7 of 11 from three tonight. Eddie, from one shooter to another, what goes through your mind when you're watching Sam shoot? Well, I, his confidence, his confidence level. Um, you know, when you see a couple go in and then when you're moving and your guys are finding you, that gives you more confidence. You already got already have confidence when you're coming in. And you yeah. see a couple go in, okay, it's like, oh, it's, it, might, it could be one of these nights. And then when your teammates are leaning on you and they're finding you and, You'll be able to re relocate, like he said, 
He, he's just reading the game. Whether it is, I like that one the most. That's my favorite that was shot your favorite? he took. And it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a three because no. they ran him off the three. Like, he couldn't do anything else but shoot the three. And he showed that I could make you pay from the mid-range. So I like that as well. But him being able to read the game, if if it's baseline drive, baseline drift, like that clip right there, or like he said, if it's a snake dribble, I'm going to relocate to the to the wing. So I give my, 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 uh, my teammate a uh, passing lane to find me and a lane to find me, and I'll be ready to shoot it. And like he said, if he gets his feet set underneath him, it's going up. And he got the utmost, uh, utmost confidence to, to knock that shot down. No question about that. My favorite one was when he sprinted down the sideline and got the ball and just threw it up there. No hesitation. But, Eddie, the question with Sam, and it's something that came up in the playoffs last year, how sustainable is that in the postseason? Well, it just has to be uh... – not, not. It doesn't have to be sustainable to where the, the point is like you're leaning on him because that's not going to be his role in the playoffs. It's totally different in the playoffs. But you are going to have to deliver when your number is called, okay? And yep. you just have to be ready for that. And so just be prepared to whenever your number is called and understand that some games that it might not be called as much as other games, but always have the mentality of like, I'll be ready, I'll be ready, I'll be ready. I can't wait to get out there because when it does come my way, I'm going to make this other team pay. And I'm also going to show the, the coach that, man, you could depend on me. I might could get some more minutes if you throw me out there, man. I got some shots for you to knock down. So I feel that that's the more, more important thing is just stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And that's exactly what that Stay Ready crew has done so far this season as we bring back in Drew and Scal in Charlotte. Uh, real quick, I want to close this conversation on Sam. Scout, that was my question to Eddie. Do you think, are you, have you seen enough for carryover into the postseason when it comes to Sam Hauser and the three? He's got, you have to put him out there. You got to give him a chance. If you never know if you're going to get four threes in a quarter or something like that, but I don't think he's going to get off the rip. I don't think he gets DMP. I think he gets the chance to go out there and play. It's such a weapon. He, he really connects well with Jason Tatum when he's out there with the steady, ready group, as you mentioned. So uh, I think Hauser will be a, ro a rotational player that can earn his minutes. All right. Do you guys have any other thoughts on the game tonight? Because otherwise, I'd just like to focus on Drew. <laughs> Go ahead. You can focus on Drew. There's nothing <laughs> like, well, well okay. Again... Drew Holiday? Or Drew, no, yeah, uh, Drew Carter. Holiday. First season <laughs> as the play by play man for the Boston Celtics. And this. Uh, oh, we're done game of the season. This is my final game of the season indeed because uh, only one road game left in the regular season. Yep. It's only on Not national on TV. Air. So yeah, Milwaukee and then yeah. of course, but no, I mean, Abby, thank you, but Nobody wants to talk about me. Let's focus on the fact that nah. Mike's got a few more games. Let's, let's send him down to the G League. As he <laughs> I know. It's funny. It's funny. I know I'm about to. I know I'm going to get some tweets when I'm calling those G League games. Like, <laughs> stay happened? down there. You never should have told Cal about don't that. Don't come back. Put him on a two-way. I just wanted oh. to go to Maine. <laughs> but Maine is yeah, lovely. Maine, not the case. Maine is yeah. lovely. It's it's uh the the food there is good, man. But I like the fact that you got sent down the last couple of days. Uh, I guess I'm about to find. Out how the food is in Kissimmee, Florida. There you go. The Osceola Magic, the one seed. But Drew, what are your takeaways? Your first season? How was it? What was your favorite moment? Oh, it's been a blast. You know, we got any music for this? I, I was texting. Yeah, <laughs> we'll pop in circumstance. I was texting you, Abby, during the uh, Backstreet Boys sing along oh, yes. here. Yeah. I do think you know a top five moment for me is probably when we were all singing that in Dallas. That was fun. That, that was, was a was lot of fun. That, yeah, that, that was yeah. fun. And, and you could see Abby walking back to the table, and we like lock eyes. We're both singing. That was really fun. <laughs> Stuff like that. You know, of course, there have been a lot of great moments from the team. I feel really lucky, of course, to have the job, but also to join this year when the team is so good. Um, so it's just been a blast. And working with all you guys is great.